Hello, you are welcome to Craft Fashion Media. My name is Eva Rosie. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to draft a woman's fitted body sloper. And in order to achieve this, we have to make use of the measurement we already have in our previous video. So please, if you haven't watched the video, it is important you do so, especially as a beginner to enable you to understand perfectly well what we are trying to achieve in this tutorial. So click on the link in the description box to watch the part one of this tutorial. So in this method of drafting, I will be drafting the back bodies first. So the first step to take is to draw a line equal to my high point shoulder to waist measurement. According to my measurement, I have 15 and a half inches. So I'm going to draw a line equal to that. So the next step to take is to locate the fullest part of the bust which is the bust apex location from the waist up and I have five and a half inches and I will mark it out. It is best to measure from the waist up and then square a line equal to one quarter of my bust measurement which is 35 and a half inches divided by four and I will have 8.875. So let's insert the waist measurement. I'll be squaring a line equal to one quarter of my waist measurement, which is 27 inches and a half divided by four. That will give me 6.75. And I will make a mark. So looking at the waist measurement, if I should connect this line to my box measurement, you will see this slant is so deep. So what I'm going to do is to add one and a half inch for my dart. So I'm going to add one and a half inch as my dart to the waist circumference and I will connect my side seam. Now let's place our darts in its location. So I'm going to use my apex point that is in between my apex which is 7 inches divided by 2. That will give me 3.5 and I will mark 3.5 from the center line then connect with my stretch ruler. Then I will measure one and a half inch. We have a sour dart, and I will share it between the two places as I'm doing, and I will connect upward. So now let's move over to 
shoulder and neck area. I will square a line across my shoulder and extend the line equal to half of my shoulder measurement. I have 15 inches as my shoulder measurement. So I'm going to divide it by 2. That will give me 7.5. I will mark it out and square a line. I will insert my shoulder slope. If you can remember, we have one and a half inch as my shoulder slope measurement. So now I'm going to insert my shoulder seam length. If you can still remember, we have five inches as my shoulder seam length, and I will place five inches on my shoulder slope line and rotate it towards the shoulder line to meet the five inches and i will make a mark and then connect with my stretch ruler as you can see and that is my shoulder seam now coming to the back neckline, I'm going to measure upward from the waistline, the distance from the neck to waist, which is 13 and a half inches, and I will make a mark. Then I will connect with my French curve to the shoulder line. And that is my back neckline. Coming to the across back area measurement, I'm going to mark five inches away from back high point shoulder below and square a line across equal to my shoulder measurement. On this same line, I'm going to subtract half an inch. and connect my armhole. And I will extend the armhole downward, as you can see. I am going to measure my armhole according to my measurement I have 10 inches so I'm gonna be taking away one inch on that area across the back line so in order to determine the extent of my dart I will have to measure my shoulder seam to find the midpoint from there i will square a line downward and this will serve me as a guide to know the extent of my dart Then I will connect with my stretch ruler. So by the time I fold this off and take away that one inch, you will discover we have at least nine inches, which is the standard for an armhole.
and that is my armhole. So for the dart area, as you can see what I was trying to achieve, you can also achieve this by folding the dart before you cut it or you do it the way I am doing it. The reason is for you not to run out of fabric when you are joining your seam. And I think that will be all for the back panel. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned and endeavor to watch the part three of this video.